Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another mail art video at my YouTube channel. I've already created my envelope today out of some Bristol paper. And if you want instructions on how I made it with the one, two, three punch board, I'll have it linked up in the very top corner. Um, I've posted two videos today and the first one was the actual creation of the envelope. And now I'm going to show you the decorating of the envelope. I'm using a deco brush from Karen Markers. This is the gold metallic shade. And I'm going to write on my recipient's name. So as usual, the address I'm using today is used with permission. Um, if you would like to submit your name and address for consideration for future envelopes shown here at YouTube or at Instagram, uh, please go to the link that's included down below. Uh, it just says submit your name for mail art. You can submit your name and address. And I do have a new form every single month. That's how I make sure that the addresses are, are current. So even if you submitted your address three months ago, uh, you'll want to submit it again because I'm not looking at things that were submitted three months ago. I'm only looking for addresses that were submitted during the current month. So just a little tip for you guys. So I wrote out uh, her name and then I used a black pen to write out the street address. And I apologize if the video here is not crystal clear and crisp like usual. Um, I, I forgot to zoom in on my camera. So I just zoomed in while I was editing and it lost a little bit of quality, but you guys get the general idea of what I'm doing here. So this is a waterproof black pen. It's great for addressing envelopes. And I use this same black pen on both the address for the recipient and also for my address on the top flap of the envelope. So now that I have the name and address on the envelope, I'm going to create a mask that goes over that whole area. I've got a light pad here. I'm going to plug it in and turn it on. And that's going to give me some light from underneath so that I can trace the area over the name and address. So I've got some masking paper from Sime Assistant, placing that over the top, and then you can see through it. I taped it down so I wouldn't slide around. And then I went around with a pencil and I left, oh, maybe just a little shy of a quarter inch around this area. Um, I'm going to be masking off the name and address so that I can do some ink blending over the envelope and it will protect the name and address while I do that. So I used some scissors and cut out my mask and then I was able to peel off the back of the mask and adhere it back down onto the envelope. Now I did have to use my light pad again for this step so that I knew exactly where to place the mask. So you can see I'm just going to kind of hover it over the top there until I can see that I'm in a good spot. And then I'll go ahead and press down and rub my hands over that entire mask so that it's nice and flat. So at this point, I'm going to get rid of my light pad. Um, by the way, if you need a light pad for your crafting, I'll have the one I have listed down below. It's super inexpensive and you can order it on Amazon. I'm now using um, some post-it tape. This is two inch wide post-it tape to mask off the flaps so that I can ink blend all the way up over the edge of this envelope and it's not going to put any color on the flaps themselves. So I'm using Distress Ink today. This is the color Aged Mahogany and I'm using a blender brush from Honeybee. And my ink pad is pretty dry, um, but you know what? I went with it because I wanted a lighter shade for this first initial blend. So after I had that done, I grabbed a stencil and the stencil I'm going to be using today is from Stamp Stamperia, I think it's the name of it. And it's this really pretty damask pattern and it's the perfect width to go across this envelope. So I placed that on top and I just held it down with a little bit of washi tape. So before I go in and blend again with that same color, I used the re-inker for it. And unfortunately my re-inker was many, many, many years old, never been opened. And I think it got a little goopy. It needed a little water to dilute it and bring it back to the right consistency. 
but it was still a little thick. I eventually did add enough water to that reinker bottle to get it back to its correct consistency. But uh, for this initial blend, the color was pretty intense and it was a little goopy. You can see I've got that area up at the top where there's a lot of ink and there's down the bottom corner as well. I just grabbed a paper towel and just kind of dabbed up as much of that thick, very concentrated ink as I could. I don't fault the product itself. This is just a matter of using a very, very old reinker. So I lifted up my stencil and that stencil cleaned up beautifully, by the way. I just put it under running water and the ink just slid right off that. So I used my paper towel to pick up any more of that gloppy ink, just a few more little spots. And then I just didn't want to have it there. So I started to kind of rub it a little bit and it I kind of blurred the design. I'm like, you know what? This makes it look even more like a tapestry or even like a wallpaper. So I kind of just rubbed my paper towel over everything because it kind of just blurred it and made it look really cool. So I peeled off the masking tape, or the masking paper, I should say, and I have nice clean edges and my flaps are still white. So that's exactly why I use them. So now I'm going to remove the mask that I made for the name and address area. And I just very carefully removed this. And I didn't know it would do this, but it did pull up a little bit of that metallic gold marker that I used for the name. Just picked up a little bit of that, um, kind of softened the color a little bit. I didn't know it would do that, but I'm okay with it. It still looks pretty gold at this point. Um, so I just peeled all of that off. So after I had that mask removed, I then came in with another Karen marker. This is warm gray, it's a nice light gray. And I decided to just add a little shadow to this white area. I thought it kind of looked like it was floating on top of wallpaper, it looked really neat. I'm like, you know what, let's lean into that and make it look even better. So I added a shadow off to the right side. And then I also grabbed an even lighter gray Karen marker to add a shadow to her name. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow right off to the side. It's a very, very light gray, it worked out great. This is another warm gray. It's just a lighter, uh, lighter gray than I used for the other shadow. So after I had all of this shadow done, then I picked out some postage stamps. I'm using all vintage. Actually, I have, well, I guess they are considered all vintage, but one is a forever stamp that came out a few years ago. And when I uh, moisten the back of these vintage stamps that need adhesive, I just use a water brush and I have a dedicated water brush to postage stamps so that if any of the adhesive sticks to the brush, then it doesn't ruin it for later paintings. So after all the postage stamps were applied, then I assembled my envelope. Put a little bit of adhesive, I used some express it tape on the bottom flap, and then I folded in the sides and folded up the bottom flap, and that adheres it, uh, keeping the top area open. I then grabbed some Distress Glaze. This is Micro Distress Glaze. And this is a really great product for sealing your artwork and making sure that moisture is not going to bother it. And I wasn't sure how well it would perform. I don't recall if I've ever used it over the top of any of these metallic deco brush markers from Karen. So I wasn't sure how it would behave, but when I initially applied the Distress, distress Glaze, it was perfect. It didn't smudge it or anything. It was great. Everything looked lovely. So per usual, after I use Micro dis Distress Glaze, I take a paper towel and I buff off the excess. And what's interesting is as I buffed over that gold, it kind of spread the gold color. And I was like, what is going on? And then I just leaned into it and went with it because it sort of antique to the whole area, made it, looked made it look really great. I went with it and I think it turned out wonderful. One thing to note, I did avoid putting distress glaze over top of the postage. That's so that the post office can cancel those stamps once I put this in the mail. So that's the finished envelope for today. I really love how it turned out. It reminds me of like old vintage wallpaper and you know that antiqued gold shade. I kept this envelope kind of went in a direction I wasn't expecting, but I enjoyed it in the end and I hope you did too. 
Don't forget, if you would like to see how I created the envelope using the one, two, three punch board, you can check out that video right now. It's on the top of the screen. And I've got two more mail art envelopes for you to check out as well. If you're just wondering how those were created. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I will be back tomorrow with my regular Friday live at 12 noon mountain time. Hope to see you there.